Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome on into the studio. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and this is ClayShare Live. Every week, we bring you a fun live tutorial demo Q&A session, something of that nature. And tonight, we're going to be doing a demo using Diamond Core Tools handheld extruders. And not only are we doing a demo with them, we are going to be giving away two of the fancy handheld extruder sets. So two lucky winners are going to be getting a fabulous Diamond Core Tools prize. So if you haven't used these yet, you're missing out. They are fabulous. Um, you know, even if you like to make handles, which a lot of people don't like to make their own handles. I am one of those weird people that do like to make handles. But even I, who like to make handles, love to use these too. So they're a nice addition to, the, to my repertoire in the studio. So I'm going to go through and show you how to use them to make feet on trays and some handles. And we did do a full length handled tray tutorial a um, few months back on ClayShare. So premium members, you guys can go watch that. And we made, I think we made a bowl like this actually. It's pretty awesome. But we made a handled bowl. Um, and we've done trays before. So tonight we're going to work on a tray and I'm going to show you all the different handheld extruder profiles that I have. I don't believe I have them all. There's a lot of them, but I have quite a few. So we'll go through what I have and I'll show you how to use them because there are a few tricks to using them that make it just a little easier. Um, so you saw the handles here. I don't know if I want to go in close so you can see right here. This is one of the handle profiles that Diamond Core Tools has. And you can see, put them on both ends. It's really great because if you want to make handles that are the same, well, pulling them sometimes is difficult, but these extruders make it really easy to do. So I've got two of the same handle. All you got to do is cut them to the right length and that's easy enough to do. So you can use them on trays, but I really like to use them for a quick way to do a handle on a mug. So here's a couple that I've got going right now. So you can see and you pick the profile you like the best, you know. I see folks are asking, how do you become a premium member? You go to ClayShare.com and sign up or you download the app and you can sign up that way. It's really easy to do and it's very user friendly. Hello, everybody tuning in. So I see there's a bunch of folks here. Hi, hi, hi from everywhere. We've got people in Ontario, Arizona, Oregon tuning in. All right. So this is my mug of handheld extruders. You know, they're, they're these little short handled creatures and it's just really easy for me to keep it in this mug. One, because it's a great example of a glaze that I, I love and a shape and a design I love, but it's, it's also handy because it's right at my fingertips. But what I also did, and we're gonna pull these through clay, but what you do is after you pull them through clay for the first time, what you're gonna wanna do is save those extrusions, label them so you know what they are and then you have a really great little reference tool for yourself because you can hold this up to a mug. You know, I can say, oh, do I like this handle? Do I like that profile? Do I like that? Do I like that on a, on a bowl? You know, so you make these extrusions, you bisque fire them, and you just keep them for a reference. So do yourself a favor. When you get these, however many you have, pull yourself some extrusions, let them dry, flat or shaped, up to you, and then you'll have those references. All right, so let's go through them, and I'm gonna show you how to use them. And then you guys can ask me questions, and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, you know, I am not Diamond Core Tools, I didn't invent these, some other brilliant person did, but um, we can answer your questions if you got any, so we can totally help you out with that. All right, so I have a block of clay here, and you might already notice that I've pulled some through there, and you can see the marks that are left behind. And what I love is you just take your block of clay, you don't have to wedge it or anything, and depending on how long that of a handle you want, you pick the side of your clay that you're gonna pull. So if I just want a short handle for either the side of a bowl or tray or a mug, I just pull from the top. Now this works for clays that are squared. If your clay comes and the shape of it is not going to work for you, then all you have to do is shape it yourself, which that's where you just bang it on a table. You know, if you've ever done what's called blocking clay, 
blocking, B-L-O-C-K-I-N-G, just so everybody's clear as to what I'm saying, where you block your own clay, you just slam the clay down and turn it until you form it into a block. And now you have something that you can pull your extruders through or anything else that you need to. You never thought of saving samples. Right, it's, it's a time saver because we look at these little profiles and it's sometimes hard to wrap our brains around what that shape is going to look like when it's, when it's fired. Like that's, that's a great shape, but what is, what is that going to look like fired? Focus is saying no. <laughs> Does, is this one happier? I can't see because I don't have a, a monitor on that, so I don't know what that's doing. But um, So, I mean, you see this and you're like, ooh, I like that, but you might not know what might not know what it's going to look like, right? So pull your little, all right, see if that gets you. All right, so it just makes it more confusing for me because I got Instagram on this side and now our close-up on that side. So, <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> all right, so um, let's pull out what I've got. Now, originally when they came out, I think they had eight shapes. So there's R. Was, is the designation for their handheld extruders. They use the R. So there's R2, not D2, just R2. And then R13, these are later ones, R18. So there's more, but I don't have a lot that are up there. R4, R6, R7. You can go to diamondcoretools.com and check out all that they have on their website, and you can see them all there. I've got them here. I have posted... Uh, an image that has the first eight, maybe it's the first nine, that I had, that's R12, and the examples of the what the extrusion looks like. All right, so we have nine, I believe, where the original was nine original. And then later on, I got a 12, a 13, and an 18. I don't know what they're up to now. Someone else probably knows because these give me everything I need, so I haven't got any more, but... I don't know if they have a bunch of new ones. I might have to go check them out. All right, so let's just start with these. Say you got them and you got a set of them and you don't know what to do. My suggestion is get yourself a board. So let me grab a board. So you have a place to put your extrusion after you make it, right? Take your clay block. So you need help judging the size of the handle when you go to attach it to a mug so a person's hand can fit through. And so the size shape of the handle fits. So I will tell you that somewhere between five and seven inches is a great length for handles. Just think about it though, everybody's hands are different sizes and everybody likes to hold mugs differently. Some people like to hold a mug with two fingers. Some people want three fingers. Some people want to put four fingers in. Some people want one finger. So it's really hard to know. So what I do is I will always make um, various sized handles. I don't make one straight size and they're all that length. They do vary from five to seven inches as a length and then when you curve it, you know, you get your shape. So for me, I like to put, I think this one's more my size, I like three fingers in my mugs. So um, my hands already are covered in clay. This is how I hold a mug. Three fingers in, just like that. I don't have huge hands and for me, this is very comfortable. Um, I know people that like the one handle, that for me would be very difficult. But somebody else, one finger in the handle is perfect. So don't worry so much about that. If you're making pots to sell, it's good to have a variety of sizes for people to put their hands in. And what I found is people will buy a mug that fits their hand comfortably before they buy one that looks pretty. It's nice for it to look good, but it's even better when it fits their hand well. That's what we all want as makers. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull. Um, let's start with the R1. Now, the R1 and the R2 and the R3, they're, they're very simple shapes. The R1 is a nice trapezoid shape and I use it for a foot, so I like that. Same thing with the R2. And then this other one, the R13, is just a little taller foot. So these are kind of like my go-to feet shapes. And then when we get into the R3, that's a really nice rounded handle. I'll show you some that are finished, but we're gonna, we're gonna pull now. 
let's we can we can start with the R1. It's this the number system. So how long would I make a handle for a pitcher? That depends on the size of the pitcher because you have a um, pivot point, you know, so you have to look at how that's going to work. I'm going to want to put four fingers in a pitcher handle. And you can use these to make pitcher handles. So you're going to want to go longer, maybe seven to nine inches. But if you're making a creamer, a little tiny creamer, then again, we're back to maybe you only want to put two fingers in a creamer because it could be smaller than a mug. So you know, really the best thing to do as potters and makers, the best thing we can do is you can make a few, make them different lengths and test them out or go into your house and see what you have and try them and see what's comfortable for you. And with pitchers, especially put some liquid in it. You know, you want a finished piece and see how it feels holding it. See how it feels pouring it. You know, if it's too, I have a pitcher over here. This is a little creamer. You know, so you can see this handle here, it's not a huge handle because it's, this is a maple syrup pitcher or a creamer or gravy pourer if you want to use it for that. And this is a great size. It's the same as a mug. For something that's a taller pitcher, I wish, I wish we'd planned to talk about pitchers. I would have grabbed a bunch of them. You know, I would go longer, maybe seven to nine inches. All right, let's pull this. Let's pull this. Try, I'm trying to stay on track. All right. So these handheld extruders have a little adjustment here. There's a little um, metal piece that you can move to make a guide that will give you a shorter or taller handle, which for foot or thicker handle. So let's pull this through. So I pull front to back, just let it glide along. When I get to the back, I like to just pull up and, and then pull it out. And so now I have my extrusion right here. And so you get a good example of that. Let me go ahead and do one. Oh, let's do the, uh... so when the R12 came out, it was limited and only a few people had it. I think this is now something you all can get. So I'm gonna pull this and I'm gonna show you what happens if we try to pull from the front. So if you try to pull from the front, oh, that came up easy, so it proved me wrong. Usually I find they don't wanna pull up nicely from the front. They tend to stick more. So I have had great luck pulling from the back, but you can see, not always, right? So now we have a handle, and if we measure its length, I've got a measuring tape over here, let me grab it, and I'll tell you, there it is. I'll tell you how long this one is. So this particular one is, and of course I'm gonna trim it up a bit and do some stuff to it, is five and three quarters of an inch long. And this, if we just curve it a tiny bit, give it a little shape, can make a really nice handle. Let's grab a mug just to use for, to give you an idea. That's plenty big enough. That handle's plenty big. There, you got enough room to play with. So I would probably take this down a bit. Now, what about a handle for a tray? So we just shape that and you can test it out by putting it on the tray and see if you like that shape. I think that's a little too big. So I would cut it down a little bit as well. So this is really great because you customize it to whatever shape you want. And then if you're gonna turn it into a test piece, I'm just gonna smack it a bit Give it a little memory so it wants to be flat instead of all those curvy shapes we did to it. And now I've got one that I'll just let dry just like that, put it in the kiln, bisque fire it, and then I have a really great reference. You have three of them and would love more. So pulling handles with this is a game changer. It really, it really does make it easier. A lot of people struggle with handles and you shouldn't have to. All right, I'm just gonna clean this up by pulling my wire through it. This clay right here is still super wet and soft. So just a couple quick wedges and I can put it in another bag that I have my scrap clay in. Sorry, Instagram folks, you went for a little ride, got a shaky. <laughs> and um, this right here I can use to make something else, whether it's wheel thrown or hand built, it doesn't really matter. But you know, now I've got a fresh bit of clay to work from right here. And you can pull some more. 
So let's see. So I'll pull some of my favorites. How's that? Because, you know, we all like the things we like, and uh, there's some I like more than others just because of my own aesthetic. Nothing to do with the design, just me and what I like. So the R8 is one of my favorites. So I'm going to pull the R8. And you can see what that looks like. It's just these little lines right here. It's just simple, nice, simple little shape. So that's one of my favorites. Um, I also really like, I'm going to find it. There it is. The R18, which I think is a newer one. And just pull it through. So if you made five mugs, I could pull five handles off the top of this block of clay and I would have everything I needed. Let me show you that one. That one's got lots of little lines in it. So you got all those lines. All right, so do you guys want to put feet on something? Do you want me to show you? Let me show you some more finished ones, actually. I could keep pulling all day, but I already have some pulled. So the R1, which we did, which is the trapezoid right here, kind of uh, truncated a little bit. Right, like a triangle that's had the top of the triangle cut off. That's a nice shape for a foot. So this is my go-to foot, is the R1. That's the one we're gonna use tonight to make a foot. And then for handles, the R9 is one of my faves, and the R8 are like my, my must-haves. If I had to have a list of ones, if I had to limit myself. So here's the R9, and you know, you can go to Diamond Core Tools and see, but look, what I love is you see it like this and you're like, okay, but what about with glaze on it? All right, here's one so you can see how the glaze breaks. I know the lights are really bright. So you see how the glaze breaks in here? It's really, it's really nice. Well, all right, let's look at another one, the one that I was just talking about. Let's see. The R8, which is one of my favorites, which is this one right here. I'll put that on the block of clay. So it's this one right here. It's all dirty. It's got a couple bumps in it, so you can see. Here it is with glaze on it. It changes it when you get to see it when it has glaze. See how the glaze pools in it? And it has this really nice little detail. If you were going to pull a handle yourself, you would have to go back later and carve that in. And that can be a little tricky to do, but with these, you just pull it through and it's done. It's done easy. Do they make a, oh, you want a slimmer one for foot pull, pulls? You can. So you know I have my foot makers that I make um, at a corn cob, but those are very small. You know, I like a tall foot sometimes. So the thing you can do is they do have those adjustments on here. So let's see, I'm using the R13. Let's go ahead and see if I can pull a teeny tiny little foot, teeny one, just a little tiny one. So depending, <laughs> you'll need a little practice, but I, that's pretty skinny, right? So you gotta practice the pull. But, you know, you can get it skinnier by just putting a little bit in the clay. Don't put it all in the clay. You can see that skinny little foot. But we've got a tray that I've made that I want to do kind of a beefy one, so we'll, we'll do that. You got the R8 um, with your business name on it, and it was the first expensive piece that you invested in. Most of the other things have been secondhand, and you love it so much, it's your go-to handler. I love that. I love that. So will I show the hand angle of the tool when I pull? Yeah, let's turn it so I can show you guys that. This is the R9. And so I put it in, and if we look at the tool, you see how this is, this is kind of flat in here? That's what I want to keep flat. So I have it at this angle as I pull. So here, I'm, I'm pulling at a very awkward angle. Normally I don't stand like this, um, but I'm going to pull it the best I can. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can see that's the R9. 
that's another one I really like. And it does take a bit of practice to get your pulls even. You know, first time using them, you might not get a handle you like the first time. You might have to do it a couple times till you get it right. Now, I could take this clay here and block it and pull this. So don't think we couldn't use this. Just wedge it up and then slam it into a block shape and then pull through. I've done that before. Let's pull, in, let's pull another. That's a nice, that'll be a great handle, this one here. Someone tried out your diamond core tools. You had them somewhere and someone came along and just used them all? A puppy. A puppy? Oh, your dog got a hold of it. A dog got a hold of it. Was it your dog? Yeah, doggies would like to chew on these because they are made of wood. All right, let's go ahead. I've got a mug and I've got a tray. Let's do the feet on the tray first and then we'll work on the mug after. What do you guys think? Sound good? I'm just gonna put those there off to the side. <laughs> if you could see my work table. All right, so I made a tray a little earlier in the day, a um, couple hours ago, three, four hours ago, I would say, I made this tray. And I used my rim template that is the six and a half by 13 and a half handled platter. And so this shape doesn't actually, you know, it's made so it has built in handles. But I thought about that and I thought, wouldn't this be perfect because we almost have a landing place built in for a handle to go. So this is almost set up already for you to know where to put your handle. So I use this and the GR pottery form I used is the five by 12 spherical rectangle. And that's what I have under here. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna lift it up, move those spacers. And you know, actually let's put feet on first. I was gonna show you, I got ahead of myself. I got excited. I started thinking about, I started thinking about putting the handles on. I was like, ooh, no, no. One step at a time, Jess. Gotta slow down. All right, let's make the trapezoid feet. Where did I put that one? We're gonna use the R13. And for the feet here, you have a choice. You can make your feet, or foot, if you wanna call it foot, go all the way around. Now I've got two examples. This one, it went all the way around and then I used a stamp to stamp in a cute little decoration. And so that when you see it from the side, it has, um, you know, just a little, just a little indent. And I really like that addition to the, to the shape and how it did that. This one, I just did little strips. Now these were not done with the diamond core tools, handheld extruders. These were done with um, just little strips of clay and a corn cob holder, but they'd be much nicer if we do it with the diamond core tools. Plus it raises it up, you know, we're gonna get a taller foot, which is really nice. So I could use the R1 or the R13. I'm gonna use the R13. So my choices are I can do a strip here and then a strip here and a strip here and a strip here and a strip here, or I can do the whole thing. And then a piece probably in the middle. Because when we have a long span like this, what tends to happen in the kiln is we have sagging and slumping. It needs support. So if I do the whole outside of this, I'm still gonna have to put a strip in the middle. Now, something like this right here, we don't need to put a support in the middle because this isn't such a big span in any one direction. So we're fine. But you will have noticed on this tray that I've got this span in the middle, this little support in the middle. And that's because if I didn't put that there, I would have sagging. All right, let's pull. Let's do some pulling and then we'll put them on. So I'm just gonna pull some strips. And like I said, if you're doing this for the first time, it might take a couple pulls. I went too deep on that. If you go too deep, you're not gonna be able to get it out. <laughs> it's gonna stick in there. So practice definitely pulling depth. And that's why there's that guide on there and that you can set. So there's two, but that won't be enough. We're gonna need probably four 
or six, depending on what we want to do, right? So let's take a look and decide. So this is where you get to have a little creativity. We could do one down here that we curve. So actually, I think I'm going to make these the same length. To do that, I'm just going to trim them uh, to the same length. So whatever, it doesn't matter the length. There is, there's no necessary number. I just want them even. And then we'll put one down here on this end, one down here on this end, but we definitely need support in the middle. And so we have this piece here, and that's really, we don't need all that. It's really long. So I'm going to cut these to be similar lengths. I might trim a little more off of them. So if I cut one, I cut the other. But then we still have the center. We've got to put something in there, right? So there we have a little decorative space in here, and I'll show you how to finish our edges so they look really nice. Ah, oh, the GR work boards. Yeah, I have one of the circle ones. I love them. I don't have any of the new shapes, but it's very exciting. So now we're going to slip and score everything, and you're going to want to do it really well because we don't want anything popping off. So we're just going to press it down. This is still on the GR Pottery form that I made it on. So in my workflow, I will make my piece, and I actually would attach the feet right away. But I didn't because I wanted to wait to show you all. So if you're making platters, plates, bowls, anything like this, when you're actually making the piece, that's when you want to put the feet on. You don't really need it to set up like I did. I just did it for you all. Did it for you guys. Did it for you. Just so you wouldn't miss anything. So this is going to give us a big dramatic foot. Like there's, this isn't just a little tiny foot, this is a foot that's going to be noticed. It's going to raise the piece up. You know, a few weeks ago we did composite footed pieces. We did some really great tall um, pedestal dishes. And this isn't as fancy as those, but it's definitely fancier than just little teeny tiny strips. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and smooth these out. Use my finger and just compress. Use your sponge to wipe it down. You know, I used to always remind my students to do the sponge taco, where we fold our sponge like a taco. And we use that to smooth out the sharp edges that we get and also to help form it and when we're pressing down to join it. All right, so we have to do that little bit in here, right? We have this, this piece. We're going to use that one. And you can decide whether you want to free float. I mean, you could just, I mean, really. We don't need a big thing. You just need something in there. It doesn't even have to go that way. It could go this way. We could do it that way. Why not? Let's do it. It's fun to change things up and do it differently every time. And then we'll press that in. So that gives us the support in the middle so we won't get sagging. And we don't have to worry about here because the distance is not so great that we're going to have any problems. All right, so let's use the side of our finger to smooth out where the foot touches the bottom. I also like to use either the back of a paintbrush. You can use that and you just smooth that along the joint. or if you want to, one of my real favorite things to use are these guys right here. They're color shapers, sometimes now called clay shapers. And let's see, do I have my favorite one? It runs off on me all the time. But it's a really nice rounded one. 
but this one will work. And so you can use this to smooth out your join and clean up those edges. Now remember I said I was going to show you a cool trick and we've, I've done this before. You can either use a dowel, I think I've shown this before, or you could use the handle of a paintbrush. You know, I think the bamboo paintbrush handles are really great for this. And you can get dowels in all different sizes. They make great tools for your studio. But you take that and you press it up against the side and what it does is it rounds it. So look at what we get for our edge. You get this slight little scoop. And so we'll use that. And then sometimes I go back over with a stamp and I stamp in there because I want to give it a little more finished look. But you, you don't have to. And we have this little guy in here and so he's not going to like to use that piece. So we're going to have to just mimic it with our finger. So maybe another reason to go and make a little crossbar, right? You don't have to do this, but I think it's fine. So we're going to have this big, big tall foot on this piece. And then if you wanted to stamp, you could just go ahead and stamp into your foot And nobody's going to see that except the person washing the piece. Or maybe when the person buys it the first time, they're going to flip it over and see it. But you end up, I'll pull it up close so you can see. Uh, where are you? Camera? Uh, over here. Two? Here. So you can see how we have those stamp marks. The light's so bright over there. All right, let's flip it over and put some handles on it. But remember, if you're making this, you're going to make it, put your feet on it, and then you're going to let it set until it hardens up a bit. You don't want to flip it over um, right away. You want those feet to stiffen up a little bit. But in the interest of time, we're going to flip it over a little sooner. So these are the spherical rectangles right here. They're great. And this is what we have. And if you didn't want to add a handle to it, you don't have to. It's still soft enough that I can attach handles but not so soft that it's going to collapse on me. But we are going to put a handle on it. Because that's what it's all about tonight. Handles. What handle do we want? Let's get our little bag of clay and let's pull some. Where did I find the container to hold my tools? Do you mean the spinner that I have over here? I got it on Amazon. And in it, I've got just old mugs. I've just got mugs and cups from the years filled with tools. <laughs> Pieces I've kept because uh, I like the glaze, or maybe the glaze didn't work out. But that's that spinner. I got a set of two. Is that what you're asking about? All right, we'll start with a fresh surface. It would take a lot of practice to get each foot section the same height. Well, you know, with the extruders, you, it doesn't take, it doesn't really take that much practice to get it right. It's, you know, a few times and you'll get it. Um, they, I got these and I used them live on a broadcast for the first time uh, over about a year ago. So if you go back and watch it, I'd never used these before and I used them perfectly fine. The first couple pulls, things were a little like, oh, okay. But um, after that, it just, they're really easy to work with. So we've pulled these shapes already. Um, what do I think goes well with this pattern, right? So that's something to consider. I like this right here. I think that's the R12. I'm going to use the R12. You get to pick when you get yours. And then the fancy set, you know, you get the fancy handles. That's kind of like me. Do I recall what it was? Well, it's your, I'll tell you how to spell it. Are you ready, Marissa? U-R-A-L-F-A. Your Ralpha. And it says, have a nice day. Hold on. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. Which, are you here? Yeah. Have a nice day. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
That's right. <laughs> so how would you put a center, would you put a center support in a large square platter? Um, it depends how big it is. If it's really big, yes, and I do a plus sign. So I do one longer side and then I do a little short on each side. So it looks like a plus symbol in the, in the middle or an X, depending on how you want to turn it. Um, it's entirely up to you and what you like. So did that help? <laughs> the your, your alpha. I don't know if I have it in the Clayshare Amazon shop. I can put it in there. And if that particular brand doesn't exist, that company, there's duplicates for it all over the place. Um, I wanted a second set and bought a second set for the house. And I don't know if it was your alpha for the second set or not. All right, so we're pulling handles. There's one. Just pulled it uh, about mm, good solid quarter inch in. You know, it's down a bit. And that's what we want. So I've got two beautiful handles that match each other perfectly. See? Perfect. Now when we pull handles, often we'll pull one handle, then we'll pull our second handle, and then we will have a little trouble and uh, pull a third handle. And then you cut one too short, so you gotta pull your fourth handle. And the next thing you know, you're like six handles in. If I need to pull six handles with this extruder, it's, it's nothing, it's so fast. Plus when we pull them, we're getting the clay very wet, and that means we have to wait for it to set up before we can work with it. All right, so I'm just trimming one end, and I think, let's see, I'm gonna go a little shorter. I'll tell you the length that I end up doing for this, because I told you what size it was, right? I told you the size that I used for the template, and then I'll measure this. All right, so I like to drape it over my fingers, but if you want a really perfect, let's see if I can find it, curve, you can use a dowel or you can drape it over a rolling pin, plain rolling pin, right? And you get this great shape right here. And so it's giving the clay the memory of that shape. We're gonna do something else to it, but that's the start. Put that down there. And then I'm gonna curve out like this. And then you can put it on there, just like that. And we can adjust it once we get it on there. We'll put a little volume in it and everything. Let me straighten this one back out and measure it for you because I said I would tell you how long this was on this platter. This is exactly five inches long. So that five inch length um, works great for this particular tray. All right, put that down there. We'll give it a little curve out. See, we just turn it out. And then we put it on here. And of course, we're gonna have to push them outwards a little bit because we have them leaning in a little. I don't love the way that's looking, but we can go ahead and take care of that in a sec. All right, I put my rib down. You know how that, what that means. We're never gonna find it. That's all right. I've got this slip and scoring tool. It's, it's made by Kemper, it's really great. And we'll slip and score where we're gonna attach it. And then just press it down, even with the edge. And then I'm just gonna shape this a bit. Pull it out a little maybe, you know? So now we have this handle on there and we might go ahead and use those stamps too that I used on the bottom. Use the same stamp on the handle. That'll tie that pattern together. You know, they'll have a, a little relationship. and So that way you could use any design you wanted. I am angling this slightly. You see how I just did that? And I'll just take my sponge and clean up any, any marks that I might have put on it accidentally with my fingernail. Let's grab that stamp. Here I have it. So I'm gonna support the bottom because it is still a little soft. It's a soft leather hard. You know, last week we were doing Scraffito on, on 
a little too dry clay. This is perfect dryness for attaching handles, but we want to support it. It's on the floor. In front? You see it? That I draw. Oh, I did drop it. Thank you. It's right here. Ha! You guys. Nancy, I always need a person in the studio keeping track of me. I drop everything. I lost my Dolan 220S knife. It's just gone. I have two of them. So pff, they both ran off together. I know it. That's how it is, though. Studio things take off on you. All right. Don't you guys take off. You all stay there. So will we eventually sell the wooden templates? Um, not until next year, but we do plan to sell the wooden rim templates. Yes, the, she's talking about these right here. We do eventually plan to make these available, but that's down the line. So that's next step in the process of manufacturing. So that won't happen until we um, move the laser machines to another location and have employees because I don't have time unless I stop making pots and teaching and stop making clay share classes. You don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. You don't want that. All right, so all I'm doing now is looking at the two handles and just kind of smoothing them out, smoothing out any sharp edges. And, you know, there, there we have it. Look how, cool, look how great that turned out. It's so, look at it. It's great. Look how fancy those cuts look on the bottom. Insta folks, look how fancy those raised feet look. Like, you show up at a potluck and this is what you're serving your stuff on. And then when they find out you made it, people are going to be so jealous. They're going to want one. <laughs> your alpha is on Amazon, but not the same as mine. Ah, I don't even know what your alpha stands for. It's what's written on the... the little spinner thing. It's too funny. All right, where are we at for time? Can I do a handle? Well, this puts it to the test. How quickly can we make a handle? Pretty quick. I betcha. So when I move forward to selling actual templates, how about making them cookie cutters? Um, I, you mean, we're not doing 3D cutters. Uh, Deb Delacruz from Daylight Designs does some amazing 3D cutters. Uh, I don't plan to do 3D cutters. If you mean cut the templates out so it's just the outside, like a silhouette, and then the inside's cut out, that's going to uh, mess with the integrity of it, and I think there'd be issues with the piece. Um, I think there's going to be issues with the piece warping because there'd be not enough mass there. All right, I am going to pull. So we use the R12, so I can't use that now for handles. We're going to use a different one. Uh, let's do the R8. Let's do the R8 for a handle. And I do have some handles, some pieces I could use as handles here, but let me just pull another one for you. What is la- I, <laughs> Lisa, Lisa Leslie's answer for what your office is. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll have to read that later. <laughs> so that one just came right out. I didn't clean out my tool. So, okay, let me show you. Do you see, do you see how much clay is stuck up in here? So you've got to clean it out. And I have found the fancy tool called a needle tool. And you just go in and you just scrape it out and it cleans it up. So just use your needle tool to clean them up. And even if it dries out and the clay dries on it, just take your needle tool and clean them off over a bucket of water, and you're good to go. All right. So I'm glad you guys are enjoying your alpha. That's great. <laughs> so here I have a nice handle. It's a, it's a good thickness. You know, you want to think about that because somebody is going to be putting their hands on it. Let me grab. Magic! A mug got made. I made it earlier. Uh, maybe 45 minutes ago, I made this mug. So if you're thinking about timing and how long it takes for stuff to, to set up, uh, that was about 45 minutes. All right, so I'm going to just trim, and then I'm going to press this out a little bit. 
I might do something different. Usually I use a cookie cutter to shape it. I might not do that. I might not do that this time. I am going to put it on here and see. I think this length, so this would have been five inches. Um, might have been longer. Hold on. Let me get you. Let me get you the info. We are, oh gosh, well, we are at a good, we're at six inches. This is six inches. So I'm going to shape this. And just curl it and make it almost like a question mark. You know, if you struggle with the, what is a good shape for a handle, a question mark's a great shape. Let me trim this. And then press it. All right, let's see. Let's see what we think. Is this going to be too big? Maybe. Maybe a little too big. So if I find a handle's too big, I take the excess off the bottom, I leave the top alone, and I'm just taking about a quarter of an inch off it. You'd be surprised, something as little as a quarter of an inch can make a huge difference in the profile of your handle. So that's still looking a little tiny bit big. Let's come down a little. So what I say, it was six, we're gonna end up probably at five and a half. For what? What I like. All right, so before I put this on, I just want to make sure there's no rough edges or sharp edges. You know, when we pull handles, we have nice rounded edges. So I just want to come in with my finger and the sponge and take care of that. Let's see, we're going to line this up. There and there. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and slip and score. Then I'm just going to stick it on and check alignment, make sure I'm happy with it. It's a, it's a good handle. That looks good there. Slip and score where the slip's left behind from checking it. And then press it into the top. Now, this is always the part where I wish I had a camera right on like my forehead because you guys can't really see this very well. And then we line this up. Make sure they are aligned top to bottom. So let me check that. And then putting my hand inside to support it, I just press my handle on. Then I'm going to take my sponge and just smooth that handle. Now, I was stamping on the other one where the handle attaches. I think I'm just going to do that on this too. So I'm going to do one stamp on this side and then one stamp on this side on the top and then on the bottom same thing. Stamp and I'll, I'm sorry if my head's in the way for the Instagram folks. I'll show you up close. See that stamping? Oh, see? Now I wasn't standing with it facing me. So they're off center. So I'll go back in and smooth those out. See how they're slightly off, off center there? but the top looks good. So what I gotta do is just use a sponge or my finger and get down here and do it while I'm actually looking at the mug, which normally in the studio I do, but you know, I'll clean that off. Let me get my clay knife. So I'm just gonna clean off that little bit of clay, wipe it clean with a sponge and then I'm just going to go back in and hold it where I can see it because I want it to look good. There. So now I'll show you. Now we're even. You guys see it? So now it's more even. And then now that I have this I can look at it and I'm I'm just Do you see what I'm doing? See it was like this and I didn't like that. So I just grabbed it and I did that. I brought it down a little. So I just adjusted it. It was like this. And I just pulled it down a little bit. But that's, that's a handle on a mug. And you can make every, every handle the same. Or you can use different extruders and make them all different. Entirely up to you. <laughs> this was a hand-built mug. Yep.
Yeah, it was from a slab. Although you could use these on wheel prone, it doesn't matter. Has your name all over it, huh? Just let you know when it's ready. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna wrap this up because I gotta give stuff away. I got some fancy sets to give away to folks. So, and I made, I made a big mess, so my work here is done. One day I'll have an assistant who will clean up after me. They will hate their job. Uh, right now, it's me who hates my job. I have to clean it up. It's the only thing I don't love about studio time is cleaning. But it's necessary, so. Yeah, so that was a slab mug with uh, the Moroccan tile pattern that I used for the design because that's our newest one that came out. But only premium members can get it. Everybody else, you guys can get it this coming Monday. And we're running about, I think you're at eight weeks out on orders for making, but our fourth laser machine is going to be here tomorrow. Ten weeks out right now? Yeah. Uh, but our fourth machine comes tomorrow, so that means soon we'll be 30% faster. So someone else does the math for that. All right. <clears throat> Kevin gave me the names. So what do I do with all the mugs I make? Uh, they actually sell Open Studio, Lisa, or I do my online mug sales usually twice a year. I'll have them. I use them also. If you see in the studio, there's a ton of mugs. They are great ways to show texture and glaze combos. And I always need those references because I need to show people certain textures or certain glazes. So for me, um, I have to keep a lot of pots because I run a teaching studio. But if I was just selling work, they would all get sold. So this one um, is the new Moroccan tile design. I'll probably, this particular one, well, I'll probably make a bunch more so that people can get them. All right, wanna win stuff? Wanna win? Let's go. First winner, and remember, all you have to do is sign up for our emails to be entered in these giveaways. Diamond Core Tools is the sponsor for the month of August, so every Wednesday we're giving away prizes. So if you didn't sign up for our emails today, okay, sign up and you'll be entered next week. Premium members of ClayShare, do not worry. You're automatically entered. You don't have to do anything at all. You don't even have to watch to win. Nobody has to watch. We email you because you give me your email address. That's how it works. All right, first winner is Catherine O'Hara. Catherine O'Hara, uh, wasn't she a famous actress? She won some Fancy Diamond Core Tools handheld extruders. Uh, congratulations, Catherine O'Hara. Oh, the um, clay is gonna end up going over there and get put away, so don't worry, Libby. Thanks for catching that, it's still kinda open. It's good. All right, are you ready? The last winner that we have, and then I'll answer a few more questions until we get to, to time we gotta go. The last winner is Cindy Bishop. Congratulations, Cindy. You too have won yourself a fancy handheld extruder set from Diamond Core Tools. We will let them know you won and they will get your info and they will send you your fancy Diamond Core Tools handheld extruders. Not a fancy actress. Yeah, Catherine, are you sure you're not a fancy actress? I think you might be. Um, so Catherine and Cindy, ladies, you've won yourself. I don't ha think I have the fancy. I don't even know what ones are in the fancy. Is that terrible of me? I should know that. I'm giving them away. I should know. <laughs> so congratulations. Have I tried making two poles and attaching them back to back to make a fuller handle, to make it thicker and fatter? Um, you could. You'd get a very fat handle because if you look at these, they are chunky. Like these guys are not skinny at all. Uh, they have plenty of mass, but you could. You could certainly, why couldn't you? You could pull them. So what their suggestion is you make two and stick them together. You could absolutely do that. You would get, maybe for a pitcher, you want a big, big shape or something, but that would work. <laughs> okay, you are fancy. You're fancy now because you've got some fancy handheld extruders. <laughs> Yay! All right, so next week we're giving away two more prizes. 
Uh, Diamond Core Tools is going to be joining us. They're going to have the new X series fluting tools and they're going to be doing a demo with those. I don't even have those. So I can't do a demo with those. They're brand new. I think they just launched a couple days ago. So it's really, really exciting. All right, folks. Well, there you have it. Awesomeness. Now next in prime time for my premium members, we are going to be making fancy knobs. I think I called it fancy knobs. Mm -hmm. uh, I did. So I got three different fancy knob shapes. I'm going to show you how to make knobs. You can put knobs on anything you want. And I'm going to have something here we can put knobs on together. So that's what we're doing in prime time. <laughs> all right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with me. I'll catch you all next Wednesday when we have Diamond Core Tools joining us live. Bye, everyone.